Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna and today I want to show you how to convert a fraction to percent. We go through these seven examples together, so let's start with the first one. 3 over 100. This is the best case that can happen because you already have a 100 in your denominator. If that's the case, then you can solve this problem pretty fast because you only take the number here in your numerator, the 3, and write your percent sign behind that because 3 over 100 is 3 percent because percent means per 100. So it is 3 percent already and you're done. So best case, if you have a 100 in your denominator, usually never happens. <laughs> but how can we get a 100 in our denominator if we don't have it yet? We have a 10 here, but the 100 is divisible by 10, right? So it's 10 times 10. And if we do times 10 in the uh, numerator as well, it's fine. We can rename this fraction. So we make 10 times 10, which gives us 100. And here we do 7 times 10, which gives us 70. So now our fraction is called like that. We have a 100 in the denominator, what we wanted to have. Now we only take the number in the numerator, the 70, put our percent sign behind it, and we're done. So we always try to get a 100 in the denominator if possible. What about this example here? We want to have a 100. Is that possible? 100 is divisible by 20. So yeah, we can multiply 20 by 5 to get 100. We have to do the same in the numerator. So 3 times 5 equals 15. And we have our 100. So we take this number here, the 15, and this is 15% then. Easy. So far. Yeah. What about this example here? Can we write the denominator as a 100? No, because the 100 is not divisible by 90. So what options do we have then before we freak out because we don't know what to do? Well, you can always take a look at your fraction first and see if you can reduce it. So 63 and 90, these numbers are both divisible by 3, for example. 63 over 3 equals 21 and 90 over 3 equals 30. So we can write this fraction as 21 over 30 and see if we can now write the denominator as 100. But 100 is still not divisible by 30, so that doesn't work. But we can further reduce this fraction because both numbers are still divisible by 3. So 21 over 3 equals 7 and 30 over 3 equals 10. So our fraction is 7 over 10. Oh, that is perfect because now we can write this as a over 100 because 10 times 10 equals 100. We have to multiply the numerator by 10 as well. 7 times 10 equals 70. We have our 100, so we know now that we just take the number on top, the 70, and write our percent behind that, and this is our result for the fourth example. Number 5. 12 over 16. Can we write it as a over 100? No, because 100 is not divisible by 16. But we now learned, let's take a look if we can reduce this fraction first. And yeah, both numbers are divisible by 4. So 12 over 4 equals 3. 16 over 4 equals 4. We have a 3 over 4 here. And 100 is divisible by 4. So 4 times 25 equals 100. The same here. We have 3 times 25, which equals 75. We have our 100. Everything is good. We take our 75 and write our percent behind that and have our result. Number 6. 
What about the eight? Can I write the eight as 100? No, because 100 is not divisible by eight. Okay, no problem. We just learned if that's not possible, then we just reduce this fraction. But the problem here is this fraction is already reduced. I can't find any numbers that are divisors of three and of eight, so I can't cancel anything out here. Okay, no problem. What else can we do then? Well, if the 100 doesn't work and reducing doesn't work, then try 1000. 100 would be the best number though, but if it doesn't work, try 1000. And 1000 is divisible by 8, because 8 times 125 equals 1000. Okay, so 3 times 125 equals 375 then. How can I convert this to percent now? Well, we can take this number here, the 375, but this is not yet my result. This is not the result yet because we only are allowed to do that if we have a 100 in our denominator, right? But what about the 1000 then? We have one zero too much in here. And this means that we have to write a decimal point in here. We have to write it here because we have one digit after our decimal point, because we have one zero too much here. So you write the decimal point here so that you have one digit after your decimal point, and this is your result then. So no problem to work with 1000, or what about here? We can't work with 100 because 5,000 is so huge. Uh, we can't reduce this fraction here either because 5,000 is not divisible by seven. So 100 doesn't work. 1,000 is still too small, doesn't work with a 5,000. But what about 10,000? So we just keep on adding zeros uh, to our 100 here. Uh, yeah, we can multiply 5,000 by 2 to get to 10,000. So 7 times 2 as well, which equals 14. And as a result, we take our 14. But this is not the result yet, because we have two zeros too many here. So we have to make sure that we have two digits after my decimal point. So I put my decimal point here. I have one, two digits because of my two zeros here. I have to fill this space up with zero as well. But this is my result then for our last example. There is a second method to do this by simply dividing the numbers, but I will show you that in a separate video. So far, this was the first method. I hope you know now how it works. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care.